Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Michael. I'm here in wireless power transfer of tool. And today I'd like to talk about the relation of compliance with the modern safety standards. It's an important topic, topic in case of development and radio frequency events. Uh, as uh, safety could be looked in front of uh, certification of your device in different countries, and it's so usage of this device in real life. Um, so, uh, we will talk about non ionizing radiation because most of us radio engineers don't use ionizing radiation in our work. Uh, so, let's talk about frequencies from 1 hertz to 300 gigahertz. Uh, there are some international standards um, that uh, tell us about what limitations of electromagnetic fields uh, are. And there are two different kinds of process that can affect uh, human and farmers. Um, first is uh, heating. Uh, it's pretty obvious when electromagnetic fields uh, point at you and uh, it, it induces currents into your body and by those heating, it heats you up. And it's not good as uh, if your temperature will rise in some two or five degrees Celsius, Kevin's, uh, it will destroy some functions of your organs. Uh, there are many classes related with heating. Uh, that you need to calculate to um, evaluate complex with a set of standards. Uh, first thing is whole body average star. Yeah. Uh, as you should know from name, you that it's uh, the amount of uh, power that uh, is dissipated by your, by your body as well. So you just calculate all the power that is dissipated by your body and uh, divided by your mass. And because uh, heating is a slow process, and uh, you need to average this uh, by 30 minutes in case of uh, non constant radiation. And this quantity applies uh, to uh, the frequency range from 100 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. Uh, if your radiation is uh, not uniform across your body, uh, then you need to calculate local star. Uh, it's the same thing, but you calculate a not across the whole body, but uh, some cubic mass, small cubic mass. It depends on standard was as exact mass. It's uh, or one gram or ten grams, and uh, this place from 100 kilohertz to 6 gigahertz. Uh, for frequencies higher than 6 gigahertz, it's a penetration of electromagnetic fields is uh, low, so you don't need to calculate uh, SAR uh, in the volume of your body, but you need to calculate absorbed power density by surface of your body. And uh, you average it by protomines uh, two, and uh, you average uh, average this uh, by surface area of four centimeters square or one centimeter square, depends on the standard. Uh, but if your relation is not uh, highly not constant, there is another. Quantity specific energy absorption. Uh, instead of averaging uh, the amount of heat it, it's in your body, 
uh, you integrate it by time and calculate joules, not watts, and uh, it applies for average averaging time from zero seconds to six minutes. And uh, the, limit, the, the, the limit is dep uh, depending on this quantity of time that you are integrating in. Uh, this quantity is needed because uh, uh, the heat diffusion of our body is limited. And if you get too much energy in short period of time, it could increase the temperature higher. And if the same amount of uh, juice is served by you uh, in long period of time. Uh, and the same thing for uh, absorbed energy density as with local star and absorbed power density, uh, it's for lower than six gigahertz and higher than six gigahertz. So it depends on uh, penetration depth of electromagnetic fields. For uh, low frequencies, uh, lower than 10 megahertz, there's another mechanism that could come with. It's electric simulation. It's, uh, it includes several uh, mechanisms. Uh, it's uh, if you harm, harm you by alternation, alternation of synapses in your brain, uh, by nerve excitation in your brain, by uh, nerve excitation in, of your peripheral nerve system. Uh, and uh, for frequencies higher than uh, I think kilohertz it's mostly a peripheral nerve system uh, and it will be painful to you. Literally, you will uh, uh, it's painful, get some pain from electromagnetic fields. And uh, as you see, the frequency ranges for electric simulation and heating is. Uh, from, from 100 kilohertz to 10 megahertz supplies both of these limits. Because uh, depends depending on the case, uh, some of these mechanisms will be higher than another. Uh, but all of these quantities are basic restriction, as they call it in standards. And to calculate them, you need a model whole to embody and uh, in all cases uh, and positions uh, between human body and your regular system, radio frequency, radio frequency device. And it's quite long. Uh, for our WPT problem, it's uh, needed a few days to calculate only one position of the human. And it's too, too long for some cases. So standards, uh, according to standards, you would calculate not basic restriction by but uh, reference level. Uh, it's an external quantity that's uh, the quantity of field itself, uh, and you need don't need to model uh, how field is interacting with body, you just calculate automatic fields itself and uh, calculate some quantities to and compare it to them with limits. For different basic restrictions, you have different reference levels for all body average star. Uh, you need to calculate either uh, like if you field strength and magnetic field strength for incident power density. Or some other basic restriction, other combination of reference level. And you uh, could com combine them as you wish. Or you can calculate, uh, for example, as we do, uh, SAR directly. 
And then for another basic prediction, like induced electric field, okay, induced electric fields by uh, reference levels, not directly induced electric fields. Uh, the same reference uh, level quantity, uh, for example, incident electric field strength, uh, is, is used different, uh, with different rules for different basic restrictions. So if you want to know uh, how your uh, ISR is normal, uh, you need to average uh, incident let it feel strength over the whole body as we do with cells. And average the time over 30 minutes, like we start cell. Uh, but with induced electric fields, because it's at no time averaging in this, in this, you don't average in, uh, in incident electric fields, you just uh, calculate instantaneous values. And for some standards, you still need to average uh, and just like fields across the whole body, but it depends on the standard. Uh, these things, reference levels, are much more easier to calculate, but they are conservative because uh, standards are, uh, have some conservative assumptions uh, while they calculate reference levels from basic restrictions. So uh, if the power of your device is your you limit, like in wire power, power transfer, indeed, uh, you may need to calculate this basic restriction itself, uh, even while it's much more complicated and you need much more computing power. Uh, but how to uh, choose cases for different of human uh, and your device. For parties, it's uh, I think pretty obvious. You just beam uh, any you beam radiation to the to the body, but it's you still need to uh, uh, try in different body regions because uh, for different frequencies uh, you. Don't know uh, what what will be worse to beam your uh, radio device to the head or or, limb, or to limbs because uh, limbs and head have different uh, restriction levels, different levels of uh, restriction. Uh, but they have different conductivity, different. Uh, the hypothesis, and so the specification uh, could be could differ too. For near fields, it's uh, even more complicated because uh, electric and magnetic fields are separate uh, there, and they could, could uh, be not in phase. They could uh, share different locations. Their maximums could be in different locations. So you need to consider both separately and then add uh, together what you get from them. So uh, the worst case for electric field and is when a uh, human is in contact with uh, ground for the field. Uh, it's the easiest way to use your body, you are grounded, and your device grounded too. Uh, and uh, the body size, for example, shield or adult or weight of human, and posture of uh, human. So it's sitting on the floor or standing right. Uh, is it this matters for electric fields? Depending on distribution of your electric fields itself. And there is additional effect uh, when uh, human uh, touch um, conducted objects that is not grounded, but still it's located in an like, in electric field. So it's uh, some 
additional effects from this. Uh, for magnetic fields, uh, magnetic fields don't harm your air directly uh, by, by itself, but it produces electric fields on you by earlier slow. Uh, so, uh, the basic restriction on induced electric fields could increase with magnetic fields too. Uh, because of Faraday's law, uh, the bigger uh, conduction loop uh, where current is going, the, the bigger uh, value of internal field you get. So, uh, Depending on the uniformity of your external fields, the most dangerous loop could be across the whole body, uh, or in cases when uh, external field is not uniform across the body, it's uh, the biggest loop could be in some orbits. Uh, and the biggest induced fields depends on their conductivity. And uh, these effects are vectorally additive. But in real case, in, in practice, uh, it happens rarely uh, when maximum of electric fields and maximum of magnetic fields are in the same place for magnetic fields. So it's not the case for practice. Another topic uh, that you need to consider is where you want to use your device. Uh, is it general public or occupational or work? Because uh, uh, these standards have separate uh, values for general public, for entire population with all ages, pregnant like women, child, um, and so on. Uh, then for adults, such as their workplaces, uh, while they remember that you know, they shouldn't touch some ground objects, for example. Uh, and these ground objects are high, high hidden from them. Uh, so, uh, less restrictive well, uh, limits is for occupational, but in more, more restrictive limits is for general public. And sadly, interaction with any medical plants is out of scope of the standards. There are another standards uh, that uh, tell us about what uh, interaction between external, external field and medical implants, but I haven't read them yet, so I couldn't tell you as much about this. Uh, what if uh, your device is uh, not uh, working at only one frequency, but it has but spectrum? It's, working together at the same time. For electric stimulation effects that are under 10 megahertz, uh, you need to add amplitudes because uh, the restriction levels, uh, basic restrictions and reference level are itself in terms of amplitude. So you just add uh, spectral components, you have uh, the whole spectrum in the case of positive. Uh, Radiation, you go with Fourier transform to get uh, these Fourier components and add them together and uh, weight it by Слышно хорошо, но не все слова легко разбираются. Я не знаю, микрофон на петличке или как? Это микрофон верхний. Можно просто громче говорить. Да, он не развязывает. Попробую немного погромче, да. Спасибо. This approach, when you add spectral components, is quite conservative too, because uh, you assume that all spectral components are in phase. It's not always the case, and it, when you know exact phases, uh, phase shift between components, and know that the, 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 their phase shifts are constant, co coherent, 
uh, you could apply different formula and get a lower result, so easier to uh, comply with septic tenant. For heating, because uh, plug is plug this, so uh, heating is power or energy, you need to add uh, square numbers of amplitude or SAR itself, so power. That's a solution I would learn. Да, уже слышно. И попробуем так, даже если он не работает. So, for heating is you add together square levels, and since you have different restrictions for different frequency range, you have different numbers for different range, like it's shown here. It's just an example, there are much more cases, so editing uh, for heating. Uh, but there is a set thing that I don't know any country that use international standard directly number by number. So um, most of them are based on these international standards, but uh, some national governments I think cannot read this international standards at all. Uh, I just uh, like to tell you about some interesting cases that I found. Uh, for example, in European Union, they have standards for general public that is uh, was published in 1999. So it's not up to date with today's international standards. And for basic restriction, it has not quantity current density. That is uh, not the case for nowadays international standards. I hope they will update uh, soon because uh, international standards have been updated uh, a few years ago and to, for IEEE standards it's in uh, 2019. 19. So I hope they will update soon, but not yet. Uh, Interesting case is the USA. Uh, they uh, limit uh, such thing as sound and corresponding reference level to sound uh, to its heating of body, but they uh, don't uh, consider electric accumulation at all. Uh, I don't know why. My, uh, I haven't experienced myself with the stimulation, so I am not. 100% sure that it is it's a good, uh, but I think 99% because uh, international standards uh, cite some medical research that have evidence of like accumulation. Uh, but in USA, you could ignore it at all. And uh, apart from the federation, uh, its standard uh, is very different from international standards because it has no basic restriction at all. So you, even if you want, you could not calculate uh, quantities inside your body like sun uh, or uh, induced electric fields for low frequencies. Uh, the only values that you should consider is external fields. Uh, while body is not present here. Uh, and this quantity differs from international standards too. Uh, for magnetic fields for general public, they have no limit at all. So magnetic fields for general public be any number. Um, but electric fields uh, are far more restrictive than in international standards. And for higher frequencies, 
higher than root 300 megahertz. It's not shown here, but uh, it's five times, 10 times, depending on frequency range, more restrictive than uh, international standard IEEE or SNIR. And another case is China, where for reference levels under 10 megahertz, it's orders of magnitude more permissive for electric fields and orders of magnitude more restricted for magnetic fields. I don't know why, but it's nowadays rare. Um, so here are some standards that I used to prepare this presentation. Uh, I think uh, the easiest to read is Perfil. Uh, it's a uh, standard by International Commission of Non Ionization Radiation. Uh, don't remember what, what to speak. So it's uh, divided by two, by two standards lower than 100 megahertz and higher. Uh, it's easier to read and uh, most of national standards use uh, various from these standards. Even European Union standards is from these standards too, but previous version. Uh, but uh, for wireless power transfer, for example, we uh, know from our practice that uh, reference levels for IEEE standards is uh, 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 gets um, better results in case of if you want to don't want to calculate basic restriction but you want to calculate reference level they then they are less restrictive and still have right values of basic prediction for important responding time. So for cases of near fields when electric fields and magnetic fields are divided, I could believe some of is better to use. So the third thing for attention ask some questions if you have some. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Set of questions. Yeah. Uh, so the first one, I'm really curious about frequencies higher than 300 gigahertz. Uh, are they assumed to be absolutely safe, or is, or they are uh, missing the no standards for some other reasons? Uh, there is now some late terms. Evidence how they uh, can affect the human. So, what uh, the quantity that you need to limit because it's nearly uh, optical already. Uh, so, there is yes, not an upper set. And they don't know what the uh, limit should be. It's our okay. case. And uh, then the question is um, if we're thinking about the uh, application in, in, in some certain medical system or, or elsewhere, of course, we must speak for all these national standards, which may be very strict. But uh, what if we, for instance, uh, demonstrate some, some, some device? Just for uh, a new principle, maybe uh, for publishing the paper in, in a research journal. Uh, what, what is the common practice? Uh, what, what are these standards uh, uh, people refer to in the literature? Just, just to, I, I don't know, somehow demonstrate the, the, the safety in general, not for specific country, not for specific uh, kind of application, but just maybe uh, general. Uh, yeah, it must be. First, three standards, international standards, of course. It's only two international organizations. Paper um, papers, there are both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, SNIRP and IEEE. 
Uh, so they use most of them and somehow compare others. Okay. okay. And, and the final question is um, uh, for, I think it was slide three. So the, uh, you, you listed several quantities that we need to calculate to evaluate uh, the safety. And one of them was uh, incident power density. Uh, is it correct to say that this quantity is applicable only for the far field scenario, but not, not for the near field? Because it, it may not have sense, you know, the power density may be complex for near fields. I have real and imaging parts. Yeah, it's true. It's um, it's pretty it's, um, it's, um, it's standards. Uh, so here, uh, or over the average star, you can calculate either of these. If you have far fields, the uh, separate electric field and magnetic fields. Uh, and the same for local SAR, you either calculate this for far fields or at least two quantities for one new fields. So, uh... Actually, I think that it would be great to have like an you know, like algorithm for choosing the metric. So just uh, presenting this table, quite a complicated table uh, in an algorithm form. So that it would be really great if you have some, some time. It won't be very hard for you, I guess, to, to change it, but it would be a, a very, very useful for all people who work with this. Uh, yeah, I thought about it this far. So, like uh, I said, there are some hiring things that I haven't mentioned, like far fields, near fields in this table. So, it will be quite a large and many choices. It's uh, already simpler than they are listed in standards, because standards they have separate tables. Uh, eight pages for isoboli standards, and you need to see all of these eight tables to all nodes uh, below them to know what's the basic restriction and reference level, but what's the corresponding between the average. I will try to show some algorithm. Not sure if I could get it right and single. Thank you. question is so are there any questions here? Uh, my question is that, uh, so you talk about how to practically measure uh, these uh, parameters, but how do you uh, do that? Like, what is the best way, in your opinion, to do that in speech? It uh, depends on uh, how much the power you have. So, uh, it's a model with small body to calculate base restriction and since you have functions for calculating SR. For induced electric fields, it not a uh, direct function, but uh, you could uh, use some functions to average over uh, some cubic mass in our standards, and you can get uh, the number of our CST. Uh, I think uh, there are some uh, programs that uh, do it better, easier. Same flight, I think, uh, would be easier for the relation of these things. Uh, if you read some papers, you notice that most people use magnetic flux flux density most of the time. But if you uh, electric fields, it's in relation in real life, they mostly experimentally. But I think they compare with the magnetic flux density, like BP. Yeah, yeah. most of the time, because it's very, sometimes the results are quite inaccurate. Yeah, compared to you, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, class is correlated uh, with mm -hmm. proportional to a large field shower. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can see if you don't have any more questions, shall we?
thank you again. I, I want you to send this uh, presentation to, for example, to me, I, and I will send it to all of the okay? okay yes. Because there are some very important uh, references here. Yeah, so, and if, if you somehow rethink this uh, and, and make some algorithms, so please distribute it. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much.